Hello viewers, welcome to Elimu TV, whereby we are going to learn and experience together. Today we are going to have our biology form 2, lesson 23, whereby your tutor will be Mr. Gerard. We are going to handle the topic on um, gaseous exchange under the subtopic, the mechanisms of gaseous exchange in amphibians. Here we are going only to deal with the uh, amphibians, because as we are aware that um, Gaseous actions uh, takes place across all the uh, animals in the kingdom Animalia. But here today we are going to look only on the amphibians. We are going to have the following lesson goals, whereby by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the gaseous actions in, uh, in both amphibians and the mammals. Uh, as I have said, these are, this just will be... Um, we are just going to do the amphibians, but gaseous actions is almost the same in all the organisms. Um, exchange in amphibians, I want to have a diagrammatic representation of an amphibian whereby we can have the frog. This is an amphibian whereby we can say amphibians live in both land and water. Uh, this, uh, this double in habitation calls for special adaptations in gaseous exchange. They achieve this by employing the f following uh, of the following gaseous the following um, methods of gaseous exchange. One, they can ex uh, the gaseous exchange can take place either through the mouth cavity, it can also take place through the lungs and also the screen. So we are going to explain each of the three. Remember you've said the gaseous exchange in the amphibians can take place either through the, through the lungs, through the skin or the buccal cavity, which is other term is known as the mouth. You can see uh, our arrows here, whereby the the blue arrows are representing carbon dioxide, which is getting um, uh, inside, while oxygen is getting outside. So here we are going to say, uh, since the amphibians have neither ribs nor diaphragm, the mechanisms which cause ventilation cannot be the same as those in mammals. Air is therefore forced into and out of the lungs by the action of the mouth. The example of frog is used in this um, in this our presentation here, and here is a diagrammatic presentation of the frog. We can look at the mouth cavity of the frog. Uh, air is taken or expelled from the mouth cavity by raising and lowering the flow of the mouth. The lining of the mouth cavity is moist, and the oxygen from the air dissolves in it. Under the lining of the mouth, there is a rich supply of blood capillaries, and oxygen diffuses into uh, into blood and is carried by hemoglobin to all parts of the body. Carbon dioxide from the tissues is brought by the blood to the cavity where it diffuses out. Now, uh, again, we can look at uh, this diagrammatic presentation of a frog here, whereby we can now discuss the um, gaseous exchange through the lungs. Can we say, uh, as you, you um, can see, the lungs where they are, they actually they lie in the body cavity in amphibians. When the nostrils are the nostrils are closed, the air can be forced into the lungs by the pumping action of the flow of the mouth. As we have discussed the mouth which we call the buccal cavity, the air reaches the alveoli of the lungs that are well supplied with blood. You can see um the lungs there. Actually they are very well uh, supplied with blood by the blood veins. Oxygen in the air dissolves into the innermost lining of the alveoli. It then diffuses into blood across the wall of the capillaries, combines with hemoglobin in the uh, red blood cells, and transported into um, and is is transported into the all parts of the body. The carbon dioxide from the tissues is carried by the blood and diffuses into the alveoli. Then it is pumped out by the pumping action of the mouth. The last um, organ where the gaseous exchange in amphibians take place is the skin. And uh, let us see the skin of um, of an amphibian, whereby we are using the example of a frog. As you can see, the frogs, they have a very thin and moist skin than the toads. There you can see, here you can realize that uh, you are able even to see whatever it has consumed, because the, uh, the skin is very thin. Beneath the skin is a large network of blood capillaries. You can see the capillaries even um, from our diagram, uh, whereby um, they are endowed all over the body. Oxygen from the air and from the water diffuses through the skin into the bloodstream. On the other hand, carbon dioxide in the blood diffuses through the skin into the surrounding water and air. 
Toads do not use the skin service for gaseous exchange. Remember this one, we have said that the toads are different from um, from um, the frogs. So this one ca is a representative of the toad, while this one is a, is a frog. Having done and said that, we can have the following activity, whereby you will be required to highlight the mechanisms through which amphibians carry out their gaseous exchange. If you have followed on our uh, lesson, you will be able to answer that uh, question. For more uh, information, you can refer to KLB, Secondary Biology Students Book 2, which is the 4th edition Nairobi, uh, Kenya Literature Bureau. And to get this lesson and many for more of our biolo biology lessons, you can send us an SMS through the number that is on our screen, or you subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel, which is Elimu TV, or you send us a message on our Facebook page, which is uh, Elimu TV, or you, se uh, you send us a message on our Twitter handle page, which is at Elimu TV underscore Kenya. Let us subscribe so that we might get more of these lessons. You'll be much welcome when you do that. Thank you.